So we've talked a little bit about arrays, but let's look at what they look like in code. Here on line 15, I'm going to start creating an int array, an array of ints. I'm going to type the word int, but I don't want just one, I want an array of them. So I'm going to use these square brackets to denotate that I want an array. The next thing I need to define is a name. That's mine, so I'm going to call it my array. Then you see an equal sign. Now that doesn't mean that it equals, it's actually called an assignment operator. And what it means is that whatever happens on the right hand of this particular statement is going to be assigned to that variable my array. The int and the brackets denotate what type of data my array is. So in this case, I'm going to create a new int array with five positions. So again, we have the data type, the name, we're creating a new one in memory, and notice that we have to specify how big it is. So currently that int array is just filled with zeros. That's what ints are initialized in the very beginning when they're allocated. So I'm going to have to do this and actually point to a position on the array, in this case the first position, which is the zeroth position, and actually put in a value for it. So I'm going to assign that one to zero, then I'm going to assign the next one a value of one, then I'll assign the next position a value of, let's say, 17. Um, then we could put in uh, 42. That's a really good number. And so on and so forth like this. Notice that at the very end here, I'm actually going to have to put a 4 for the last position, even though it's 5 up here. That's because we started with 0. So that's the long way to define an array. We can also define an array using a little shortcut that looks something like this. Now notice I've used curly braces. However, I'm not going to be writing a block of code. They're just a shortcut for doing exactly what we did up above. So here I'm going to be just putting in those same numbers. And it's a little bit easier to read if you're doing a real small array. The length is implied by how many elements are in it. Now we're going to continue to show you uh, a bunch of different data structures and each of them has a certain advantage or disadvantage. This is the most basic way of organizing data. It's incredibly fast. If you want speed and you want performance and you don't mind having to do things manually, then arrays are the right data choice for you. A computer stores an array contiguously in memory, so while I've laid them out evenly spaced here, it's not quite like that. It's usually one after the other after the other. And uh, if we wanted to read through the array, we could do it very quickly and examine each element. However, we, if we wanted to find, say, the third position uh, element and, and its value, we'd count through one, two, three, and then actually reveal that value. We wouldn't look at each value simultaneously.